through the mist, I saw a figure emerge, and with it, a darkness advanced, devouring and reshaping, and as the sunlight cast its final, everlasting shadow, I felt a chill rise from the abyss and eclipse the world. Welcome, welcome to a, a Talking in Stations trailer review of the new Eclipse trailer that we just saw from CCP that is announcing Quadrant 2. Uh, thank you very much for hanging around and sticking with us. We brought some people that you're going to be very interested in hearing from. But first, I want to introduce uh, Dirk McGurk and Carneros, who are going to be with me talking about uh, or distributing the talk time. How's it going, Dirk? How's it going? I don't know, man. This morning has started off way different than what we thought last night. <laughs> and Carneros, how are you this morning? Well, good morning. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a good morning for say champagne. Okay, uh, thank you guys. Now so, I want champagne. Yeah, Carneros is going to be taking questions from you in the stream. So if you guys have a question, put it in there. January will find the good questions, filter them out to Carneros, and he'll be asking them to uh, everyone in the channel. Uh, also, if you want to come in and lurk, we're all in a voice channel in Discord that's Talking In Stations Discord. You're welcome to come in and hang out with us. You won't be able to talk until the second part of the show, but you will be able to hang out with us. All right, so let's get started with some introductions here. I first want to introduce uh, from the initiative Pandorolica. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Pando. Uh, we also have some lore experts that are going to be helping us decipher this, uh, what we've seen. And we'll start with uh, Uriel. Hey there. Uh, do you want like else? an introduction or anything? Or yeah, actually, why don't you tell us a little bit, just a little bit about yourself, corporation, where you reside, that sort of thing. All right, yeah, real easy stuff. Uh, all right, I'm just with Ark in the game. Uh, we're all the big kind of retirement club of lore nerds, and we all just kind of talk about this stuff all the time, and this trailer is pretty exciting for that. Uh, that's about it. I've been playing since, what, 2012 or so, and I've been into this stuff the whole time, so this is good. I'm having fun right now. Cool. Uh, also with us is uh, Makoto. Makoto, are you here? Makoto, not with we'll, us. We'll make sure his mic works in just a second. Um, also hanging out with us is Ash Tarathi from Marlow. Greetings, fellow Imperians. I am Ash Tarathi from uh, Malro. Okay, I call you. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't sound really sure about that, Ash. I'm not going to lie. All right, and uh, rounding out the uh, introductions, we have uh, Arcia Elkin. How are you, Arcia? I'm doing quite all right. I am uh, mostly a low sec FC, doing most of my work with Kimi Harar these days, play playing since 2010. Really nice. Oh, and finally, we have with us Sutonia. Hey guys, I'm just a nerd who flies casuals a bunch. Everybody knows Satonia. And uh, one last guest. 
Uh, we have one second. Yeah, we have uh, Fonsui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lastly, we have Fonsui. Good day, everyone. Uh, I'm essentially a lesser nerd than Suetonia, I think. (laughs) That's my position here. Well, anyway, we have uh, a good group of people that understand uh, the backstory of EVE Online, which is clearly there's a lot of uh, relevant stuff inside this Eclipse video. But also there's some mechanics that we haven't seen before that are in this video. We want to talk about those as well. We want to take your questions. If you saw something that you want deciphered, um, let us know. And uh, let's get started first with... Can I, can I ask the first question? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, of course. I need to just to get my mind right. Did we just see Walking on Planet 2049? <laughs> well, it wasn't us. It was a Triglavian, but... I know, but no, like, I don't... Was, was that there to represent that somebody's going to be walking on a damn planet? <laughs> I think that so was they them asked to... to work in Iceland. It's been a rough winter. They are still working on the shooter, so who knows? I I do believe that Zoria Triglav, and I think it's a reference to what's been going on in the world news. The Triglavians have been kidnapping uh, colonies and moving them to planets for exper- other planets, like storm planets, for experimentation. Yeah, there's been stuff happening in the news for that. Uh, there was one real large thing that happened, to, I guess, recently. Uh, where, so there was a news thing where it said, okay, uh, Triglavians stripped, you know, all biological matter from, uh, this planet somewhere. And, uh, people were like, okay, that sounds very not like what the Trigs do. Cause that's more, so the drifters do that sort of thing. They've been known to do that sort of thing where they need like biomass and stuff. So they'll straight up like say harvest an entire, uh, facilities, uh, you know, crew and everything on it, uh, for, you know, that purpose. The Trigs haven't seemed to need stuff in that way, and that's why that stood out as being really weird. And then a few days later, we find out that they had moved the entire uh, population of this colony uh, to, yeah, like what Ash said, a storm planet, and uh, had put them in sort of a place that they made, sort of like a testing environment, where they were like messing with them and trying to, in some ways, like modify them to uh, be more adapted to their environment, that sort of thing. And, and as we know, you know, Trigs are really into all of that mutoplasm and stuff, all of the, uh, you know, changing, uh, you know, bioadaptive things. So the fact that they're pulling people in, you know, it's kind of a lead up to what's going on here, I guess, where they want to move in, more or less. All right, Dirk, I hope that answers your question. We're not walking on planets yet. <laughs> no, probably <we're> not. not. <laughs> okay. It's, it's not Snow 514 that we just saw, like, <laughs> All right, let's look at the, uh, we're looking at the video so you can see some of the uh, scenes that we'll be talking about. I see some new weaponry. Uh, any, let's just go with first impressions, starting with Pando and Suetonia. Uh, w- did you guys see anything in here that looks new to you? All right, so what I saw, there was one ship type at the stack of arts that I didn't recognize. And then also it looked like it had some kind of a new weaponry that reminded me of the Keepstar DD or Arcing Vorton projector. I'm not quite sure if I saw it right though, so might have to have a closer look. Which could be, the ship type could be like a heavy bomber, which they've been talking about before. Maybe it's not, maybe they went away from the, the heavy bomb idea and made it more of a different kind of thing. So you don't hit, like with every bomb, you hit like a fleet of 100, but maybe it's like an Arcing Vorton a projector and you just hit like eight or nine or ten you know and it bounces depending on mass so you know could be i don't know yeah i believe someone uh mentioned in the talking stations chat that it actually had an upwell logo on it so what could be interesting is this could be some sort of new upwell slash concord cruiser of some kind that's been funded by the four empires because i I'm not as good as the lore as other people in this chat, so they can probably take over from me about it. But I think there's a there's an initiative between the four empires, right? They're coming together to help defend themselves against the Triglavians. And it could be a reward for players, maybe, if they choose to side with the empires instead of uh, siding with the Triglavians. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, just looking at it, yeah, that's absolutely some sort of... Uh... 
<laughs> upwell ship there is a uh teasing of something where a uh sort of a new eden common defense initiative which is uh something showed up for that on singularity basically like just today it this isn't really spoilers just there's a corporation with that name on it now where yeah exactly what you said the empire is working together a uh you know a common defense fund making stuff happen trying to protect the empires that sort of thing and this ship, uh, absolutely looks like the first thing that would be coming out of that. And like you said, exactly, sort of like an arcing Vorton projector uh, type thing seems to be applied to that. You know, funny thing, having that on a ship, given that the Doomsday on the Keepstar is super duper inspired by uh, the Doomsday Jamil Sorum used, uh, you know, in the lore to fight the Elder Fleet, which you can still see in the uh, Empyrean Age trailer. There's a lot of people that are out in Twitch that are, keep asking about what about the gate? What's going on with the gate? Uh -huh. So um, what I feel like might happen, and there was just a recent news article where like Triglavians are hitting a system that's basically one of the high-sec islands in Eridia, and you see the gate shutting down, and they're talking about uh, the system's changing, so I, maybe they're either shutting down gates or like changing the connections or something. Because, like, I see the high sec island singled out, and it's like that would be an ideal place to change a connection well, to. If I may. Maybe, one sec, maybe system security is for the first time changing, right? Yeah, the, the 0 0.5 did go down on the Stargate. Go. Well, the Stargate completely collapsed, and uh, there are been some various files put in uh, for a while now at that uh, gate collapse uh, audio files. And so, you know, it could simply be that they're sort of like going, uh, yoink, this system is now effectively abyssal. So uh, you'd have you to know. leave with the triglavian wormholes or something. Yeah. Or for that matter, through uh, W space. Like imagine, for instance, right. like you lose yeah, all I, access I, to your system. I think that. Well, then again, it would be like being trapped in W space without probes if you didn't have probes. I guess everybody needs probes in a depot and everything now. Fonsway, you want to get in on this? Yeah, uh, there has been uh, on the text of the Triglavian Stellar Accelerator uh, describes them experimenting on blue stars and specifically permanently connecting them to their network or pulling them into abyss. This is not speculation, this is in-game text. And we just watched a star turn from blue to red and get Triglavian text on it, and we yeah. watched a gate go dead. So I think that that's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. Okay, in a uh, non... Also, I think, I think okay. that they're mad at us for calling them Triglavians instead of Triglavians. Okay. <laughs> in a non in a non lore way, can we describe what that means to the gameplay that players can expect frankly it's hard to say just yet i mean if i had to guess at stuff you know if stargates change connections or go entirely offline that obviously brings into play you know how do you get in and out of the system will more wormholes be opening up in those systems you know might the uh the drifters take an interest in that because their whole thing is you know they travel through wormholes anyhow well drifters um, need triglavian yeah. so exactly, that yeah. would yeah yeah the whole thing with them too is you know the drifters and the trigs are you know big uh rivals <laughs> i won't go i won't dive into that right now because not the time uh, if you want to talk about it later that's fine too yeah but yeah though you know them changing things maybe turning off gates just like clear skies three <laughs> funny that they played that a couple of days ago mm. um that's galaxy yeah. brain right there yeah. um let me bring in Ashtarathi. what are your initial thoughts on that so i'm reminded of the fact that systems that are invaded uh, the the physical gate shows that Zoria Triglov is the owner, and so I wonder whether or not we may be possibly overdoing this, uh, overstating what's going on here, because it, we could just be watching the transition of entering into an invaded system. Now this could be like a much more aggressive version of. banners i would just expect zoria's banners to potentially show up afterwards it's like we have claimed this system all right let me get uh, my quote down here and then we're going to go to a question 
So counterpoint to Ashtarothy, though, is that we don't see the Triglov banners uh, pop up. We just see the gate collapse and uh, everything go dark. And considering the theme of Eclipse, I, I think it's uh, fairly clear to say that the idea isn't necessarily, oh, hey, we took over the star system. Rather, the, the star is dark and the system is dark in a, a very much uh, abyssal sort of way. I, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, uh, just to, to pause it, that the uh, system warp speed test uh, is uh, another test deployment of mechanics that uh, we might see in a Triglavian captured system. How exactly that applies, of course. I think you're probably right. I just think that it's interesting that they cut from the they cut the camera right as you would expect it to like answer that question, right? So they don't show what happens once the gate is fully collapsed. All right, let's so, go to a question, Carneros. Question from the stream chat here uh, about the gate that they see in the video. Do we think the gate we see indicates where the first event may happen? If so, we see the gate goes into a 0 0.5 system, and it's a, it looks like it's a Minmatar regional gate going into Galente space. So as far as we can tell, the only gate that this applies to is the Bay Kaleli gate. Could that be it? Could that indicate something? I mean, maybe. <laughs> well... Kaleli was the site of a big fight between the Minmatar and the Galente. So it's like a system that has like a history of having a history. So that could be a thing. It could be arbitrary, but that does really just apply to Bay Kaleli. And Kaleli was a big fight between the Galente and the Minmatar. But um, what I was going to say was uh, with the systems changing with the Triglavian invasions, I noticed that there are already some different properties that uh, they don't have they have when they're not invaded, which is like I was chasing a war target through uh, Amar High Sec. It was a Midmatar faction warfare who was roaming Amar High Sec like months and months and months ago, like a little like right after the Triglavian invasions came out. And I was playing gate games with them on the edge of an invasion and i noticed the faction police weren't showing up in the invasion system so there's already some different properties when they're invaded all right now i just want to say we're going to take some questions from chat we're going to take some questions from tis discord we're going to try to answer those we're going to try to find some things in this video on our own and then a bit later, we're going to open up to the public and allow you guys to ask your questions uh, and actually have discussions. Uh, but first, we want to get some clarity with uh, some of these experts that we have. I, I, I have a question. Is there anything to the title Eclipse? Does Eclipse represent any... Like, like this is not Blackout again, right? This is not like Blackout a different way? Is it Blackout a different way? Like... <laughs> I mean, there. The, so when we were entering into the faction warfare uh, update, and the terror, there was a terrorist attack throughout Galente Federation uh, that canceled the election. And during that time, they explicitly called out that the fluid routers and specifically the quantum entangled helium five system was under attack and taken down. Now, they, it was only the civilian system, and therefore it didn't affect us as players. But I do find it very noteworthy that CCP would explicitly call out this exact same hallmarks that would play into Blackout as part of this uh, the Faction Warfare ramp-up. Uriel? Uh, you're talking about the name Eclipse and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Really, I mean, it seems kind of on the nose, really. I mean, you just straight up go to cut to the trigs covering the star and uh, <laughs> and you have the beginning of it where, you know, everything is going dark, where uh, the trigs are obviously t changing this planet where people are already on it. Uh, I, I mean, sure, there could be something more to it. Um, but, you know, as it looks right now, it's you know, very thematic. But isn't it isn't it the system by system blackout f feature? That, that's definitely what I'm taking away from this. M maybe totally not with the, with the with the information blackout, but the fact that if if the sun gets covered by a, a trig incursion of sorts, 
and all the gates go down, then the only in and out will be wormholes and pe- player owned stargates, right? Th- this is, uh, uh, this is exactly the type of stuff. Maybe some filament yeah, filaments too, of course. But that, that's uh, completely novel, and it's a, it, it feels like blackout done right. This is going to be potentially exciting, ex- especially if it's a lot of system being victims to this. All right. Um, let me go back to the beginning here and just get... Um... On a scale of 1 to 10 from you guys, I want to see what your interest level is and some of the stuff that you've seen as far as peaking your interest being a 10 and I already knew all this stuff being a 1. And we'll start with Pando. Oof, putting me on the spot here. All right. We got- <laughs> He's going to set the benchmark for everybody else's rating. And you guys in chat, you guys mark up your 1 to 10 uh, in there as well. So like technically all I'm interested in is like the real mechanics and like what are the ships going to be on field and all that stuff. So the law part, I'm always surprised how much law there is to it because I never look into that stuff. So all I saw was that one ship and the weapon looks kind of cool. It's a new toy. So I would say for that particular part of it, nine out of 10, that kind of could be awesome. But like the trailer, all of like all of it together. So. I would say like maybe a solid seven. There's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, I don't really care too much about. By you, Setonia. Uh, I guess I'm kind of in a similar boat to Pando. I uh, I follow the law a little bit, but I'm not super into it. It's more of just, you know, something that's nice to read every now and then for me. Uh, but I'm definitely interested in the, the mechanic side of it. So this new ship with the... Uh, Arcing Voltron projector ability is definitely sounds like fun to me. So I'm pretty excited. I'd say I'm an eight. All right. And uh, Fawn Switch, one to 10, surprise. Oh, I don't know about surprise. I, I have a transliteration update from Spod. I don't know what that is. Uriel? The, te- the text on the star. Oh, okay. Uh, Uriel? Well, hold on, hold on. You have an update on that? Yes. He's been, Spot has been translating this in the background and I've been helping him. And oh, we've spotted, well, hold on. We've spotted it. Great. We'll go to the translation of the planet and what's written on it in just a second. That's what uh, you saw just a second ago. But I want to go through and get Uriel and the Makoto and Ashtarathi and then Arsia. So starting with Uriel. You're asking uh, well, how we feel about the trailer, the ranking? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, for me, probably. I mean, to give this an eight point five or so, probably. I mean, like, maybe a nine. This was definitely hyped up a lot, and you know, I was worried about it not living up to that. But from what you know, we see here, uh, there's a lot of stuff coming. You know, both in terms of game content and you know, lore. So <laughs> I have a lot to look forward to. I enjoyed this a lot. I don't think any of them will ever top the uh, Emergent Threats trailer one from 2015 for me. But that's a very personal thing. Instead. Um, I really enjoyed this, though. Uh, Marco, too? Uh, so, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, an 8, or maybe depending on how I feel about elements of it, like uh, a 7.5. Um, part of that, though, is that like the gate closures and doing funky things with stars has been uh, an ongoing theme with the Triglopians for like the past like year or so. So this feels sort of like a a culmination of a a lot of development themes that CCP has been hinting at for quite a while. Um, So yeah, definitely interested in seeing where it goes uh, and uh, definitely curious about the mechanics and what it means from a story perspective. Uh, I do hope eventually we see sort of more um, behind the mask, as it were, with the Triglavians, uh, because they're, they're sort of, you know, they're the boogeyman, but we don't know... Like, we don't decisively know uh, much of anything about them. Uh, we've got lots of theories, there are lots of data points, but, you know, they're mm-hmm. sort of the, well, a, the literally masked figure. Okay, Astrothy. Yeah, I, uh, I think that I had predicted that Zoria Triglov was going to be the one walking on the on the planet, and it does appear that that is correct. The things that stood out to me as being the most surprising was the new Upwell uh, ship that appears to have the the new weapon system, as well as the new what appears to be Upwell structure um, that has unknown use, but seems to have something in the middle of it 
uh, pointing up that is outside of the moon that they're fighting over. Um, I'm most interested to know what that is. I'm also particularly interested to know because it, during the fighting at the very end, it cuts between three different fights and it's kind of confusing. But at the very beginning, you see what appears to be a Triglavian stellar accelerator shooting a beam at something. It then cuts to uh, a Trig Dread shooting at an Erebus, but that's not the same fight. And the stellar accelerators are often pointed directly at the stars themselves. Um, so I don't know what that accelerator was doing. So those are kind of the three biggest things that stand out to me in the trailer. Yeah, cool. I, I concur with Ash there for sure. The uh, stellar accelerators will definitely <laughs> play a part here. Your interest. All right. And, um, Arcia, one to 10. Uh, maybe five. I think that, um, I'm interested in how like the, the mechanics of how the tricks change everything is going to affect me and i like i like to see like obviously the the space fighting in the trailer is fun but i i don't fly trig ships and <laughs> don't run a lot of trig content in game so it's not perking my interest as much okay and finally dirk mcgurk yeah um I'm going to give it an eight plus for lore and probably some story stuff, but probably a three for what it like for what it's communicating about the broader game of Eve online. Like there may be something super deep here and the lore guys are going to like, you know, really, I guess, like dig down deep into that. But um, I don't know. I, like from, from a, from the perspective of watching kind of this for entertainment, Great. Love it. Art guys, you really did a really good job and whatnot. But what does this mean for EVE Online in a broad context for the second quadrant of the year? I'm still a little, uh, like, not maybe getting it as to what it means beyond some Trigla Triglavian stuff. Or Triglavian, like, however they want it to be pronounced. <laughs> like, like, when the CSM people were like, oh my god, I just saw the freaking trailer. Holy crap. Well, I think that had some inside knowledge that maybe they have to where they're able to take that inside knowledge and apply it at the same time to watching the video. Um, for the rest of Eve, I'm, uh, I'm just not sure. Well, right. in the end, it's a, it's a trailer, right? If they wanted to show you exactly what it is, then you would be watching a PowerPoint presentation, right? But, yeah. Ag agreed. Agreed. And you know, and this is kind of one of the weird things that, I don't think we've ever done this before, right? Like we've never like in the moments after a trailer got released, breaking it down sort of a thing. So there's probably a bunch of stuff here that needs to, you know, that needs to play out. But from a gameplay, like, like, like Pando, Pando, you were, you were one of the first people, you, know, you were the first person to like kind of, you know, rate this, right? When Matter All asked and, and you give it a pretty damn high score based on like two small items. When you look at this, what do you actually think for, I don't know, like how your gameplay is going to look in the future based on what it is you do in Nullsec? Well, so, yeah, I'm in Nullsec, so the Triglavian stuff, it's mostly high sec, low sec then, so it doesn't matter too much to me, but um, that one ship, it has, like, it makes that indication that it's meant to kill bigger stuff, which I like doing, so... <laughs> Which um, I'd like to. <laughs> it it kind of looks like a really cool tool, so I'm hyped for that one. And like I'm, that's with every trailer you're gonna have a, a good chunk of lore stuff and you know just cool looking shit. So I'm happy there's something, you know, I can look forward to. So that's why I gave it a seven. I think a seven is fair. I think you gave it. I thought you gave it an eight, but yeah, you gave it an eight. I thought you gave it like an eight, an eight plus no, no, no. or something. You can't take it back now. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm pretty sure I gave it a seven. On the, on right. the second call, you've already reduced your number. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I gave it a nine for the ship. Oh, I'm hyped. Right. A nine for that one ship, but overall, I rated it a seven. Right? For that particular little part of it, I gave it a nine. For all around, I gave it a seven. Which you're kind you're kind of confusing to me. I suggest you do not FC. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Um, okay, so let's go to the translation of what's being written on that planet. What's actually happening there? Looks like the planet's getting um, laser beamed and converting from uh, blue to a red planet, and then there's some writing that star. goes up. McLeod, so let's see if we can see that. Yeah. So th that's a star. It's uh -huh. turning red. <laughs> Did I say planet? I meant star. Yeah. And, and they're writing on it. They have been threatening to steal our stars, or however, uh, the text that Ash put earlier, permanently connect them to the conduit network. Uh, Spot has been diligently translating in the background, transliterating in the background. We so far have ancient domains, which have been referring to K space and the word Zordash, which is the world arc. There's also Nomata in there. Yeah, Noemata. Is another yeah, one. I, uh, I see Noamata is so on the left hand side at the very top we have ancient. Immediately under it is Zordash, and Noamata follows that immediately underneath. On the right hand side we have the word domains. There's a word above domains that has not been translated yet. The word underneath domains is shall. And mm -hmm. uh, Noema or whatever, however you pronounce it, is to Triglavians. It is their ideals. It is their policies. It's a it's a tradition that they have accepted. Yeah, exactly what Ash said. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for people like me and um, that don't understand the lore in a strong way, can we break it down a little bit by going back and reviewing what happened in Chapter 1, what happened in Chapter 2, and where we are now? We'll give a little time to this so that people can catch up in a very basic way. Anyone want to take that on? Yeah, but, yeah. I can start with that. So chapter right. one really, uh, yeah, chapter one was really, it, it kind of starts before, you know, invasion with Into the Abyss and all, where we actually get our first looks at the Trigs and get some idea of what's going on. Uh, and the build up to invasion chapter one with the, uh, in the, with the Hordaz uh, world arcs that we see being built, you know, in the uh, special rooms in the Abyss, uh, we had other, you know, information we got from items there, and we learned a little bit about Zoria Triglov, a little bit about uh, another Trig, uh, who we haven't actually seen in person yet. Um, and the whole thing is, Zoria is the one in charge of conducting the invasions, basically, uh, you know, with her own, with their own uh, agency, really. This is basically was, all under them. And was that the first, sorry to interrupt you, was that the first trailer that we saw where the three guys go into the abyss and then it follows them out? Yeah, that basically. That was the Invasion Chapter 1 trailer, yeah. Okay. We never actually had a trailer uh, proper for Into the Abyss. So that's, yeah, exactly. That was the first cinematic where we really saw that, and that was, yeah, okay, they found the construction site there, and oh shit, you know, it's completed, and now they're following you out. <laughs> and that kinda, that's kind of how that felt, yeah. Uh, the well, in, but yeah, Invasion Into the Abyss had a scope video. Uh, introduction or uh, introduction to the Triglavian domains, which really laid out the abyss. So they did that instead of a like a trailer trailer. Yeah, and you know, not to understate it either, because the build up to that was really great with all of the uh, Trig data vaults and all the pieces of the videos that came out, and then they had you know the billboards and things like that. There there was a lot that built up to everything happening. Uh, you know, between then and invasion and before everything even started. But yeah, chapter one. Uh, kept it kind of simple where the first week there was, um, you know, the first stage of the invasion would happen. You'd have Triggs flying around, shooting things. Second week, you had uh, the first types of the sites actually showing up. The minor conduits, I'm pretty sure, were the first ones. And then you had the majors the next week, and then the world arcs the final week. Uh, the whole thing with Chapter 1 was the biggest HQ site, really, is the world arc proving ground, uh, which is to say... The Triglavians uh, are, you know, now at that stage, were at that stage testing out their world arcs because uh, it's funny. It's a funny thing. Those things weren't some old kind of ship they had. Uh, they actually redesigned uh, from what we know of the Hordaz. Uh, they redesigned a much older type of ship that they'd also call the world arc. Uh, it was the Kites class, which has its own really fun implications when you get into the name uh, and you look into the real life lore of it. But basically, the Hordaz is an aggressive, you know, forward version of a world arc, and they're obviously using it as such. Chapter one was them testing the world arcs, proving them rather, 
proving is such a huge thing with them after all. Uh, I don't know if someone else wants to take chapter two, so I don't just take the whole time. Sure. Um, so chapter two, we saw a pulling back of the Zordosh and a uh, introduction of, of kind of the stellar accelerators. As we entered towards chapter two, we got a direct threat from Zoria that was put on Twitter of all places, I think. Or no, I can't remember exactly. No, it was sent out to the uh, Semiosis consoles, I'm pretty sure. Um, that was a kind of a call for players to be proven and to potentially join the flow. And then at Chapter 2, we got a second broadcast from Zoria across all of the different uh, billboards that said, basically, help us and you will be glorified, stand in our way, and we will destroy you. Um, just prior to this, we saw them starting to construct these accelerators, the stellar accelerators, which influence the solar systems that they are built in. And um, then with the introduction of uh, Chapter 2, we see that the Concord themselves have been doing their own research on these stellar accelerators. And now we have the observatories, um, both Triglavian and and Concord. And uh, in those sites, you decide whether or not you wish to help the Triglavians uh, against the resident empire or do you help the empires destroy the triglavians either way mm -hmm. you fight a dreadnought class vessel of the person of the side that you're fighting uh and destroy the observatory there um the reward is the new um Zernitra dreadnought by the triglavians got it so so let me just uh, in a very basic way look back at the first chapter the first chapter was that players were able to go into this environment and they discovered there were some big things being built in there. And when they retreated, they thought they were safe. But this thing, uh, the Ark, the Triglavians, came out after them. So the invasions had begun into known space, or empire space. And then the second chapter was, hey, pick a side. You can actually join these NPCs or you can fight against them. And then this is now chapter three for uh invasions w where are we now well or what's we'll it look like? siding with one side or the other in the dreadnought site at this point has no permanent effect on your character you just that decides who you fight however um if you look at what they've been preparing for in the new uh chapter it looks like we're going to see a more like consequential decision where you're actually building up standings and it's one side or, or the other that, and that's a long-term decision as opposed to a short term, which site, the side of the site do you want to run? Hamakoto. And it's worth noting that, uh, CCP burger and, uh, CCPers at large have routinely commented that as this, uh, arc continues, that there will be potentially world changing decisions made. So, you know, we don't know anything about the mechanics, but what if the decision about whether to try to stop the Triglavians or help the Triglavians do whatever they're doing with the star, break connections, etc. What if there's a, a permanent or at least a long-lasting change to geography? Uh, yeah, I'm getting something from that, too. I mean, if you were listening to the CCP guys talk before the trailer came out, uh, my first guess about what's going to be happening here is that we will ultimately be the deciders of where the Triglavians uh, end up settling in K-Space, because they're absolutely going to become a permanent presence. Technically, are we looking at, like, you know, some some kind of weathering effect where where Triglavians exist? Or will, will they be able, like, are we going to see some of that wormhole uh, system bonuses and debuffs? Oh, certainly. I mean, you already get that with the uh, stellar accelerators, and that's only the first step of what they're trying to do to these stars, as we see in the trailer. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of changes that come with it, but I think the whole thing basically is going to be where are the trigs going to settle, and that's going to affect, uh, obviously, the places where they settle down. It also appears as if this is going to be some sort of unifying moment for the empires, at least on some level. 
Um, with all of this faction warfare, Hello Blue, you've seen a lot of strain between the four empires. But as the Trig um, ramp up their threat, you see the for the formation of Edencom, which is effectively like Super Concord, as they are attempting to unify their forces to pr prevent the Triglavians from further incursions. Um, it's it's also worth noting that while these invasions are happening in space, there the Triglavians have been raiding facilities stealing supplies um there's reason to believe that the stellar accelerators or observatories may be pulling matter out of the heart of stars they're harvesting all kinds of different resources one of the reasons why blackout occurred wasn't the drifter attacks it was because the triglavians were attacking key places um of infrastructure which was ca causing them to have to kind of flex things over um and now as as was mentioned earlier they've kidnapped an entire colony or or perhaps several colonies in order to conduct human experimentation so they are very much continuing to ramp up their science and uh even during the still during the zordosh uh world arc fight what you you would see these all these um readers um they are trying to it would seem experiment with their ability to manipulate space-time uh, outside of the abyss and monitoring their levels of entropic radiation and other such things. Worth noting as well, when you talk about the stars and harvesting anything from them, uh, you know, first off, it'd be very neat to have actual content to do at these, you know, at these beautiful new stars. Um, but one of the biggest uh, important materials in uh, the lore of Eve something called Isogen 5, which is basically supposed to be some special isotope of Isogen, which is really, really a mess with space-time. It has a lot of energy going on there. And it is basically the MacGuffin uh, that makes wormhole the stuff possible in the first place. Big caches of Isogen 5 were collected from blue stars, uh, and these things blew up, and that's what caused Apocrypha and the wormholes to open up in the first place. So hmm. getting anything out of stars has some interesting ideas coming from it. Arcia, what do you think? So what I was thinking about when the commission of the, the Concord commission of the empires working together, the Ede, Edencom uh, was mentioned is that recently, like the empires have been not getting together, like to us, like, an extreme degree and like in, in faction war recently uh the news in that uh area of the game is that amar basically dropped an animator bomb on a fishing village recently on a planet um so like i might think that maybe the, the triangles uh when they invade nations maybe the other nations might end up backstabbing the other nations so like maybe they're only working together on a surface level and maybe it could mean like eventually like it changes with how faction war or other such like missions and such uh are carried out oh mcleod uh somebody wants you to go to 58 second mark let's see what's there okay um dirk uh, yeah do you have any questions Dude, I've, I've probably got like a whole bunch of questions and they're really stupid. It's like, <laughs> like I, I am, I am right now trying to decipher what the hell this means for the broader, you know, the broader Eve. And I, and I know that sounds really vague and also, you know, really enlightened at the same time or something. I don't know. Like why, why does null set care? Does wor do wormholes care? Like, is it is there stuff in here that is more than just this carry on of this triglavian sort of storyline? Sorry, could you repeat the end of that? I, I missed some of that for some reason. It, is there stuff in here that you know does something more than carries on this tri you know, triglavian storyline that affects the broader? <sighs> That affects the broader game. Uh, well, the storyline is is a big part of the game. We'll, we'll give it that. But I think what Dirk is saying is like, what are, the players that don't indulge in lore, like what game changes are they looking at? How is this going to affect them? Why should they 
care about this trailer, but you. Well, I mean, off? yeah, yeah. Let Makoto go. So um, a lot of it depends on how exactly the man, uh, mechanics shake out. Are we talking about temporary changes to map? Are we talking about permanent changes to map? Do the system weather effects only exist in the temporary basis, or do those start spreading through all of New Eden? Do we see more randomness and craziness? What happens if, for instance, like, okay, let's say Niarja, like, basically disappears off the map. What the hell does that do to the economy of New Eden? Like, in a very direct way, it may not necessarily affect someone who's, you know, engaging in war fighting down in, you know, say, like, the south of Nolsec, but it does affect the economics of EVE, and so you can see a lot of knock-on effects from something that doesn't necessarily have, like, a a day-to-day -day impact. And a lot of it's just going to depend on where exactly CCP is taking this, like what types of space they're affecting, how aggressive the Triglavians get, whether the players opt to support the Triglavians in doing something nasty and permanent, or so on and so forth. All right, Carneros, got a question. Okay, we have a, yeah, we have a question from Red Nutter in the Twitch stream who says, considering CCP just added something to the HUD, the heads-up display, that shows wormhole effects, which according to lore was caused by certain stars. Maybe when the Triglavians, Triglavians take over a star in a system, that that will give you some sort of system-wide effects like wormholes, which is, I'll point out personally, is kind of what happens in an incursion. When the Sancha's nation takes over a system, you'll see, you know, system-wide effects. Could it be something like that? We have to watch out for Panel. So that is actually what is happening in invasions as it is. So the closer to an invasion foothold, the more uh, um, impactful the evasion effects are. Um, and then in addition to that, as it was mentioned during the during the tippy top phase of the uh, invasion, uh, you can now have the stellar accelerators be built, which also do a secondary effect on the system, so you can actually have two different weather effects applied in a foothold at the same time. And that stellar accelerator effect lasts after the invasion is over um, if you do not destroy the stellar accelerator. And then you see now the speed effect in low sec, which I've theorized for a little while is possibly an experiment by, by Concord because we know that they are trying to develop their technology off of Triglavian technology. So it seems like one of the biggest themes of uh, the Triglavian is this idea of the weather effects and uh, being able to bring that into the game. You know, this is uh, Abyss has weather, uh, depending on which filament you go into, will dramatically dis uh, determine how your uh, ship will perform. Um, and so we know that CCP is interested in creating, quote unquote, weather patterns, uh, short lived effects that that control or that that will impact systems uh whether or not they're player built or not player built that's one of the things that i find very interesting about the new upwell structure that we saw in the video um so the idea of creating more uh terrain in eve i think is probably the big one of the the high level goals out of all of this All right. Uh, Sutonia, did you have anything else that uh, you wanted to point out from this trailer? Anything come to mind? Or Pando? Uh, not specifically. Oh, sorry. No. And Pando, well, I. Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just, I just think the, um, like, if we assume that new ship that we saw and the gun uh, or the the Vortum projector that is actually the that might just be the take on heavy bombers um i'm i would be fucking happy about that because i think the the problem of bombers nowadays like they're very oppressive um for other subcaps and so on so they're very hard to balance so when they first said oh yeah heavy bombers are going to be a thing I was uh, worried about them implementing it in like too like too much of a crazy way because you know 
bombs it's just hard to balance but this take like i could see this be a way more healthy take on it and um yeah so um i'm like as you can tell i'm pretty much focused on that part of the the whole trailer if, yeah if i can um, also get in mm -hmm. um so it's yeah whenever they were talking about heavy bombers you know back whenever um one of the first things that came to mind you know for me instead of bombs was you know something like a miniaturized less you know op version of say a drifter doomsday so this builds right into that i mean you got the arcing vorton projector kind of as this uh you know different sort of doomsday but you know focused one shot thing at a time nonetheless that isn't you know a bomb yeah i want to point out though in that trailer you don't see it shooting at capitals so i might be completely wrong when i say that might be the, the heavy bomb approach it might just be a different chip type which is also fine i'm still happy for that one so, so. yeah of course <laughs> yeah we see uh, the uh what looks like a new uh the new upwell ship i don't know if it's the same one shooting that um lightning bolt style weapon or not is. i can't tell if it's it it is okay so new ship new weapon looks like the size of what a destroyer cruiser yeah it looks like a cruiser it looks, to me. Cruiser, it looks right? vaguely like the uh the draugr which would be the um the command destroyer for the triglavians um what I find very interesting about this is, so so if you have a weapon system that bounces between them, then you now have what could be accounted, amounted to an AoE weapon. It could be based on you know, range between the targets. Um, but that means that you now have a multi-target weapon that is functional in high sec. Because it would, if it would only bounce between valid targets, then it wouldn't accidentally splash into the wrong target. And so you could have um, more constrained combat and still use things, you know, normally you can't use things like smart bombs or bombs or any of that kind of stuff in high sec, either because of being concorded or just not being allowed. Hold that frame, McLeod. Keep talking, sorry. Um, so with this weapon system, they could introduce it basically anywhere, high sec, low sec, whatever, and it, would, it could be smarter in how it chooses its targets. It does, I think uh, Pando pointed this out, that looks like it's hitting subcap, uh, subcap ships. It does look like, well, it definitely looks like it's hitting subcap ships. But, uh, McLeod, can you almost like back it up a frame or two, so, like before we actually see the beam hit? It's got a pretty spool up, I have to say. Now, if you've seen this weapon before, you've seen it on um, the Doomsday. It's a Doomsday device that comes from structures. Uh, and that's. Um, usually hits the highest mass ship in other words the biggest ship first and then the second biggest ship and then the third biggest ship and that's how it bounces it finds the mass and it can hit three or four or five who knows maybe eight ships until it runs out of energy and this looks like it's hitting us a, a lot smaller ships so that's an interesting yeah. change first of all like there are some people that are saying that it's a caracal. You you get a shot from it from above, and it's very obviously not a caracal. It actually looks closer to like a blackbird than anything else. Um, but this weapon system has a lot of history, um, and that history is very closely tied with that Isogen Five that was discussed earlier. So um, Isogen mm -hmm. Five is this old you know old substance that can only be found supposedly in blue star systems. Um, and one of its functions was the super weapon used by Jamil to destroy the Elder Fleet. That's the very first time that we saw this effect. Uh, and you can see it in the Empyrean Age trailer. Later on, when they made the Upwell weapon system, they said that they were inspired by the super weapon, but that it wasn't necessarily the same weapon system. Um, but here you have that miniaturized version of roughly the same thing, and these entities are are closely tied to um, what that was originally, and so it could be some minor level of of like bringing back that tech into the modern world. Right. The other thing that's obvious and that was you know leaked out on purpose by CCP was the. Uh, what looked like a new doomsday coming off the avatar. What do you guys see in that avatar? Uh, so that um, 
Um, they've said before that effect was uh, basically they just since they redid the avatar, they have redone the effect for how the doomsday looks on it also or for just the way it fires it, basically. So that seems to be that uh, I'm currently on singularity fitting up a Titan so I can try to see how that looks myself. So <laughs> you went right to work, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I like the pretty stuff. So that's maybe a decorative change. Uh, maybe not. Oh. I mean, it could just be the the visual effects on it were updated, and the uh, maybe the skin was updated. It doesn't, but uh, I'm wondering if maybe the geometry was also updated on the model itself. We are hearing it is on the test server, so you may want to go check that out. Yep, it's on the test server, and it is a, a change in its geometry. Um, the charge up of the beam is actually really cool. There's a video, I think it was on Reddit, that was posted about it. Okay. Uh, Arcia? I wonder with the new weapon system having the ties to Isogen 5 and being this trailer being released in the middle of like a economy and resource rebalance that maybe there will be pa carefully picking what kind of resources they use to make these new ships and weapons. The trig themselves actually use what's called Isogen 10. Um, which can be found in the abyss only. And in fact, uh, one of the things that we use to build the T2 Triglavian ships, the salvage that we pull off of the wrecks themselves, is called lattice locked deca isogen. So it seems like they're using this stuff to literally build their ship as well. And in the description of isogen 10, it does describe that it may have some unusual properties if you were able to. Um, split it somehow. So these are different um, isotopes of the same material. I do want to point out that uh, CCP Convict is uh, repeating the invitation to join them on Singularity for a mass test today, 1700 UTC, which is just about 45 minutes from now. And he's uh, adding a further sweetener to the deal. We'll be testing out something to do with the new avatars. That sounds exciting. Great. So 45 minutes. And they're going to have uh, an event on the test server. And uh, there's going to be, uh, you're going to be able to see the Titan and its new doomsday, its new look. And I guess uh, there's going to be some kind of a sweetener. Just a Carnegie's. reminder. Yeah, if you go to your EVE launcher, you can change the server where it says Tranquility Online. Change it to Singularity and let it uh, let it patch. All right. Well, we're about to wrap up this first section. Um, we're going to do an additional 45 minutes, but we're going to allow people. We're going to have kind of a town hall and allow people to ask questions inside our channel. That's Public Voice 2 on the Talking In Stations Discord. Uh, and we'll do that in just a minute. But first I want to say, is there anything else that you guys wanted to point out about this trailer or any um, other comments you wanted to make? I think we've mostly covered it. This has uh, been a pretty good talk. And people have to remember, this is not like after days of watching this, right? Like this literally landed on our plates and everybody is sort of reacting in the moment, right? So I, I am quite certain that over the course of the next, you know, 72 hours, uh, you know, especially the lore, the lore guys and everything like that will be like, you know, frame by framing this thing and, you know, and figuring out more about it. So th you know, this is definitely initial reactions out of this. If you don't think I've been frame by framing this. I know, I know. I, I'm trying to give you a little more time to like, you know, get really super specific. Especially if, for instance, we uh, figure out that the text um, on that sun, you know, whether it's copy pasta from other trig love stuff or whether there's some new component or it's like, what does it mean? Uh, from the words that have been found so far, what we can tell is that this is not text that has appeared elsewhere. It appears to be a fragment of a larger message. Well, here's hoping that we get some more Triglavian messages soon, then. I mean, I'm only sitting on like a thousand Semiosis consoles. They've got to be good for something, right? <laughs> All right. So we're going to... Um, oh, Pandu and Suetonia and Fonsui, you guys have any last comments? 
Not really. Uh, well, actually, there's a uh, mm-hmm. there's a cool little uh, link on CCP Games uh, official site, that's ccpgames.com. They have a news article up, and in it it says uh, there's a bit of uh, like a, a a few paragraphs about the new expansion, and I just uh, there's like one part of it that really excites me, and it says uh, new and mysterious ships and weapons in the description, and ships and weapons are plural, so there could be more than one uh, ship or weapon coming into the the next few months which is really exciting to me so in addition to that up well let's call it a cruiser for now with its super weapon in addition to that there may be other weapons and ships yeah it could just be me reading too much into this uh, news article but they do use plurals when they describe they describe ships and weapons so so obviously the ships and weapons excite me they always do i'm the shipwright uh in addition to that i'm very excited to see what sort of a permanent presence the Triglavians will have in in the game. Uh, I expect to see them around Blue Suns. I, I don't know if they're going to take over a section of space or if they're going to take over multiple small sections of space or individual systems, but uh, their interest in Blue Suns has been clear from the start all the way down to this very last image. Last question about this. Is there any indication on where these battles are happening that we see in the trailer? In other words, are are these invasions coming to NullSec finally? Any indications one way or another? Um, most of the indications seem to be the Triglavians fighting with a certain empire in each of the different fights. So it doesn't indicate that it's necessarily NullSec. But... It, I mean, nothing precludes it from coming to Nullsec, but it seems like the first thing is the Triglavians conquering the Amar City, and then we see, like, the Minmatar system, too. So it seems to be the Triglavians fighting the Empires. That said, there's a lot of Titans in there, and while the Empires do have Titans to deploy, it would make sense that at least some of those conflicts were with the Capsuleers. Well, we hope they're Capsuleers, because we want to play the game, right? (laughs) Well said. Okay, thank you very much. You guys, uh, on short notice, um, came together and gave us a lot of insight into this new Eclipse trailer that's announcing the second quarter of development for 2020. Um, So I want to thank uh, Suetonia, Pando, Fonsue, Arcia, Makoto, Uriel, Ash Tarothi, thank you guys for giving us a lot of insight. Dirk? Yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for showing up. <laughs> hey, thanks for waking me up for this. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm still trying to process some of this. And, and uh, of course, we all love trailers, like, you know, regardless of what the deep insight of them means and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to process this and, like, figure out whether or not, <sighs> I don't know. Like yeah. uh, Dirk's, Dirk's the street man. We needed him. Right. Okay. <clears throat> also want to thank uh, everybody that followed us. And so there were some subscribers here as well. I want to thank you guys. Um, you can join our discord and hang out with us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to open up the floor, have kind of a town hall and take questions from you guys and take discussion from you guys. If you have something to add, now's your chance. And we'll also be looking at chat as well. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And sorry, last thing I wanted to say was Carneros. Thank you very much for grabbing the questions. Thank you. Thanks. January. Uh, And thanks January for getting those questions and controlling uh, chat and also McLeod for quick style troubleshooting that got us up and running. That was grace under pressure. Thanks McLeod. We will be right back with more eclipse trailer. (laughs) 